Hi everyone, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. In this video, we're going to learn the two-player game Golem Arcana by Harebrained Schemes. The Great Khan is dead, and now the various factions in the world of Aretsu fight for domination and control. You'll choose your side and then create a custom army of powerful golems, assign them knights, and then equip them with ancient relics and draw powers from the ancient ones. All in your effort to win the various scenarios included in the game and that continue to be added. The game of Golem Arcana utilizes miniatures and modular boards, but also a stylus that communicates with an app to assist the players with rules, combat resolution, and army building, along with a host of other features. In this episode, I'm going to focus on teaching you how the stylus and application work and how they interact with all the components included with the base game. Then in a follow-up episode, I'll teach you exactly how the gameplay works. And in a final episode, I'll show you how you build your own custom army using the application. In follow-up videos, we'll then do a full playthrough of the game so you can see exactly how this all comes together. But for now, join me at the table and let's start to learn how this works. The first thing you need to do is download and install the Golem Arcana app onto your device. I'm using a fourth generation iPad and throughout this video, I will switch between and sometimes include on screen live captures from the iPad so you can see things in greater detail. But just remember, many Android devices will work as well. So using an Apple device like this, you need to go to the App Store. I'll search for the app by typing its name in the search bar, and after a few seconds, it should come up. Now, I already have this installed. You'll notice I can go back here, and the Icon app is there. When you launch the application, you then have the option to sign in. And you'll need to do this in order to play. You'll see it says, please sign in, and you just tap on the gear symbol. From here, if you don't already have an account, you can create one by tapping on Create Account and fill out this information. The app and registering is entirely free. I already have an account, so I'll go back and log in. Once you've logged into your account, you'll be able to create and manage your armies set up and play a scenario, and even take your army to another player's table by logging into their device. Now, I would like to point out that the nature of this game means that the application can be updated. New features could be added. For example, at the time of this recording, there is no option for remote play, but that's something they're working on. They're also looking at creating scenarios that would allow for more than two players. So it's possible that what I show you here may look a little different than what you're looking at there, depending on when you got into the game. But nothing should be so different that you'll have trouble following along. For now though, let's take a moment and look at the different physical components that are included in the game. The base set of the game comes with six double-sided terrain tiles. These are broken into nine spaces each and are used to set up the growing number of scenarios provided by the application. You also receive six miniatures three from each of two different factions, and their associated cards which detail their gameplay information. To give you a sense of their intended scale, if you look closely at the miniatures, you'll see the small knights that pilot these massive golems. The game also comes with stickers and banner stands to put them on, which you can then use to uniquely identify your miniatures when you or your opponent has duplicate golems on the table. And finally, you also get two control cards, two dice, mana well, blessing, and curse tokens. To help you understand how the application works, I've set up a single tile, put some miniatures on it, and I have the application running in the middle of a game. And this way, as I point out different things, you'll get live examples of how the technology and the components interact. This is the stylus. It comes with batteries already installed but you'll need to remove this tab the first time that you open the box in order to engage the batteries. Now ensure that Bluetooth is enabled on your device. For me, with an Apple product, I need to swipe up from the bottom of the screen, I get the control menu here, and I can tap the Bluetooth symbol to turn it on. There are three buttons on your stylus. This upper one is the power button. 
Hold it down until you see a light glowing here. This means the stylus is now on. Now in the application, from the left hand menu, select the stylus manager. In the top right hand corner, you'll see an option to scan. Press that, and very quickly, it should find your stylus. But it's not connected yet. First, tap to connect. It will try to connect and ask you to enter a pin. Tap in that space, and then enter the default pin of 0000. When you're done, it will try to connect, and you will see you succeeded if there's a green dot beside the stylus icon. If you click on the edit option, from here you can tap on either the default name, which in this case is 79-72 and so on, or you can click on the pin to change that as well. I'm gonna change the name here, and I'll turn it to Rodney, like so. Now my stylus has been saved as Rodney, and that's how it will appear after I confirm it in the application from now on. Changing the name and especially the pin can be very useful, especially if you're playing with a second stylus or if you're at an open tournament event and you don't want the actions of your stylus or your neighbors suddenly interfering or interacting with your application. But now let's take a quick look at some other features found here on the stylus. Should the batteries on the stylus run out, you can turn it over, unscrew the screw here, remove the cap, and replace them with two new AAA batteries. The stylus will turn off if left unattended for a period of time, but if you'd like to manually turn it off, hold the power button down here until the light turns red. Then you can release the button and the stylus is powered off. This end of the stylus is the conductive tip. You can use it to press on your device's screen in place of using your finger. This end of the stylus is where the magic happens. It's used to read the game pieces and communicate with the application. It comes with a cap, so be sure to remove that when you're ready to play, or the stylus will not be able to read the components. As a reminder, we won't be going over the gameplay rules in this video. So as I tap on different components and the application responds, some gameplay questions may come to your mind. Just hang on to those. We'll cover them all in the next episode. By focusing on how the technology works here, we'll be able to fully focus on how the rules work when we get to that later. So now let's look at the stylus in action. And we'll do this by pointing the stylus at different spaces on this terrain tile. You'll notice as I move around, the spaces are highlighted and then focus is shifted to that location within the app. Anytime you're selecting terrain or any other flat gaming element, like this card, you point the stylus straight down. Now we've selected the winged preserver. You can also select a golem by pointing at the strip around its base. Now this is not a flat element, so you need to hold the stylus at a 45 degree angle. I wanted to have the iPad on screen so you could see just how quickly the stylus communicates with the application. These are the two main buttons you'll use during the game. The larger select button here will generally allow you to confirm choices that are presented by the app. We'll see several examples of this shortly. The smaller page button here allows you to quickly flip through pages of information on screen. For example, we have the sand lion selected. And now by using the page button, I can cycle through its various moves and attacks. On some screens, you can click both buttons at once and see specific details like the modifiers in effect during combat and other background information. Not necessary for gameplay, but helpful when you want a better understanding of the game rules that are in effect. Anytime you're on a screen and you want to go back, just press and hold the page button. As we saw, each unit in the game comes with a golem card, and these can also be used to bring up information and take actions. If you point at an empty space on one of the cards, say where the golem is pictured, it will then select that golem, and I can bounce around very quickly, as you can see here. I can also be more specific and point directly at a feature on the golem's card. For example, I can select its movement, which is shown here, and immediately it jumps to that golem and shows its movement abilities and allows me to take that action if I choose to. Or I could pick one of its attacks, which are shown on the right side. For example, this is the Dune Viper's Spiked Volley. Or, as we saw before, I can click the Page button 
to cycle manually through the different move and attack actions. Alternatively, the movement and attacks of a unit are also found by the icons located around the bottom strip of a miniature's base. And this means that you can also select these options by pointing here. So during the game, you have several different ways of selecting the different features of a unit. Just choose the one that's most comfortable to you when you're playing. Let's specifically look at movement. By selecting the walk action on the sand lion, I can now see in the app the spaces highlighted which we can move to with a single move action. The app takes into account limitations based on the unit's movement, terrain effects, and nearby enemies, along with any other special effects that may be boosting or degrading the unit's movement. Now I can tap on any of those highlighted spaces. In this case, all of them are highlighted, so I can go anywhere. Let's go right up here to this winged preserver. Once I've pointed on the location I want to go to, I confirm by pressing the select button, and then place the unit into that space. If I wanted to move again, I will now see that this location cannot be moved to, and we get a little notification of that as well. It's darkened to show that I can't go there. So the app ensures that you never accidentally forget a rule. And cheaters are really not gonna like this game because there is no way to conveniently forget something. Attacking works in a similar way. First, I need to choose the kind of attack I want to make. I'm gonna pick the bite from the Sand Lions card by pointing at it. Now I need to choose the target. Well, the only enemy on the board here is the Winged Preserver. So I can select it by pointing at its base or by pointing at its card. And once again, the application is gonna take into account line of sight, range, and any other effects that would make this a legal or illegal target. And if I was not allowed to pick this as a target, the application would notify me. So once again, no way for me to make a mistake. Without going into the rules for combat, I did want to show you this screen. The value 75 here is normally what I would need to roll either equal to or less than to successfully execute a bite. But the application takes into effect my target statistics and any other effects that might influence my ability to hit my target. And that's why down here we see the final modified value of 67 or lower that I need to attain in order to successfully bite this winged preserver. This value here is also the damage that I will do. We see the total hit points of my target. And this gray area is the 17 points of damage that will be removed if I successfully land a hit. I also have the option of pressing both of the buttons on the controller, and now I can see all of the details that go into coming up with these values. I don't need to understand these in order to play, but if I want to see what's influencing either my accuracy or the damage that I'm going to be doing, the armor of my opponent, and so on, this is where I can look. Pressing both buttons again will take me back to the attack screen. When you want to confirm the attack, click the select button and the app rolls the dice for you. You'll notice on screen, I rolled a one. That's a fantastic roll and definitely a hit. And as you can see, the damage has been removed from my opponent, which had 100 points at the beginning of this combat and now has been reduced to 83. Now, instead of letting the application determine your fate, you may wish to roll your own dice. And you can do that. Let's take a look. First of all, we'll have the Sand Lion use its hamstring attack this time, targeting the Winged Preserver. But before we click the Select button here, we're gonna need to do an extra step using this control card. Let's take a closer look. Looking at the screen, we see we need to roll 87 or less to hit. But rather than click Select on our stylus, we're gonna flip our control card over. And here, we're gonna see an area where we can enter the dice roll by pointing here. Now you simply take the dice, roll them, add the values together, and that is the result that you enter here, 25. Then you select enter, and that will confirm your attack. In this case, the target's armor was enough to block any damage, but this attack has a special effect. For the next two rounds, we've crippled the winged preserver, and now it will be easier to hit with other attacks. Each different golem has its own unique card. Let's take a few moments and familiarize ourselves with what can be found here. The name of your golem is here, along with an artistic rendering of its miniature. And each golem fits into one of the different class sizes, ranging from smallest to highest. We have 
war sprites, ogres, titans like this one, and colossus. If you tap this symbol here with your stylus, you'll get a look at the knight that is piloting your golem and any special abilities that it's providing. These are your hit points, in this case, 100. If your hit points are ever reduced to zero, then your golem is removed from the game. This is your armor stat. It will reduce damage that you suffer. And this is your dodge. It makes it harder for you to be hit. Any movement you have is listed here. Some golems will be able to fly as well as perform regular walk movements. And then all of your attacks are listed along this side. And if you flip your card over, you'll find indicated here any passive abilities of your golem, along with all the additional details of your attacks, because many attacks do more than just damage your opponent. They can create lasting effects that may hinder an opponent or help you, depending on how the attack is resolved. Once again, the application will handle resolving all of those effects for you. We looked at the control card previously, but the other side of it, when we were trying to enter the dice values manually. Now let's look at the front side. If we point at this icon here, we get an overview of the map. This will show us where all of the miniatures are currently located, how the terrain tile should be oriented, and any other effects that are currently happening on the terrain. This is very useful if somehow the map gets bumped and some miniatures fall over or get moved around. This will allow you to reset everything or just give you an overview of the battle landscape. Pointing at this symbol here gives you an overview of the ancient ones that you currently have access to and the powers they are providing. These are additional benefits that you can utilize during the gameplay. This symbol here allows you to look at your army, seeing the different miniatures you have in play. Sometimes the app will ask you to confirm a selection, showing one of these five unique symbols. In those cases, it will not be enough to simply click the select button. Instead, you'll need to point at the appropriate symbol in order to proceed. When a player has finished their turn, they point here at the end turn and then click select to confirm. Play is then passed to the other player, and if you only have one stylus, you'll pass the stylus to them as well. Pointing at this symbol allows you to open up the game menu from within a game that you're playing. So here again, you can cycle through and look at the Ancient Ones, Armies, Map, Enter Dice, go to the Stylus Manager, exit the game, or save it, which is a feature that's coming soon. You can also look at the options for muting or adjusting the volume of the application. During this preview, I've turned the sounds off, so you haven't been hearing any music playing or any other effects when you land a hit and roll dice and that sort of thing. To close the menu, just point at the symbol once again. If you ever need to troubleshoot your stylus, here's a couple things to keep in mind. If you ever walk too far away from the table with your stylus, you may lose the connection. But as soon as you come back within range, it will automatically find it. If your stylus does stop working though, first try rebooting it by powering it off and then back on again. If that doesn't work, consider replacing the batteries. And finally, if that doesn't help, reset to the factory settings by holding down all three of the buttons at the same time for several seconds. Well, hopefully that gives you a good sense of how the technology works. But I'm sure some of you are curious, how does the actual game work? Well, I hope you'll join us in the next episode because I'm gonna go over all of the rules for the game. And keep in mind, many of those rules are managed by the application itself. And there's even a couple of tutorial scenarios that will guide you through the rules and how to play the game. But for some of you, I'm sure, if you haven't picked up the game already, you're curious, well, how does this work? And is this something that would appeal to me? Well, hopefully I can give you a sense of that. And then in the following episodes, we're gonna do an actual playthrough of the game so you can see how both the rules and technology come together to create the gameplay experience. I hope you'll join me for that. And if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.